Every now and then, Sakana AI comes up with a new idea. Do you remember their previous product called as AI Scientist, which we covered around six to seven months ago on the channel? That was supposed to be the first comprehensive system for fully automatic scientific discovery. This time, they have come up with a new idea of something called as AI CUDA Engineer. In this video, we are going to check out what exactly is this new offering from them and what it entails. But before we try to get into the details of this AI CUDA Engineer, let's try to understand the whole context and set the stage. CUDA, which stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture, is a parallel computing platform and application programming interface developed by NVIDIA. It enables developers to harness the power of NVIDIA GPUs for general purpose computing beyond just graphics rendering. CUDA provides a set of tools, libraries, and programming languages that enable developers to create high-performance applications that can run on NVIDIA GPUs. And that is one of the main reasons why NVIDIA has such a huge and seemingly unbreakable monopoly at the moment. Another concept which we need to understand is CUDA kernel. A CUDA kernel is a function written in the CUDA language that runs on a GPU. Kernels are the fundamental building blocks of CUDA programs and they execute in parallel across multiple GPU threads. CUDA kernels are designed to perform specific tasks such as matrix multiplications, data processing, or scientific simulations. By writing instructions directly at the CUDA kernel level, developers can achieve significant performance improvements for compute intensive tasks. And that is why it is quite intriguing to see that Sagana AI has created this AI CUDA engineer. So what exactly this CUDA engine engineer is doing? The AI CUDA engineer is a system that leverages AI and machine learning to automate the process of converting PyTorch code into a highly optimized CUDA kernel. The system uses a combination of NLP or natural language processing, program synthesis, and evolutionary optimization techniques to generate and optimize CUDA kernels. The AI CUDA engineer takes PyTorch code as input and translates it into CUDA kernels using a large language model. The system then uses evolutionary optimization techniques to improve the performance of the generated CUDA kernels. This involves iteratively applying random mutations, selecting the fittest kernel and combining their features to create new potentially better performing kernels. If you look at this diagram, this gives you a bit more high level overview from their paper. As you can see that there are four stages to it. In stage one, a module definition of PyTorch code is converted into a functional version that separates out the operator parameters. In stage two, the functional version is then translated into corresponding correct CUDA kernel, which can be loaded to replace the native PyTorch version of the operation. In stage three, they have used the translated kernel to initialize a runtime optimization process, which samples, edits, tests, and evaluates a batch of kernels in parallel. Finally, in the stage four, they have leveraged the discovered kernels to retrieve related ones. These are then used to enhance the in-context information for translation or optimization. The way they have created the kernel is also quite interesting. First, they have defined these prompts like uh, this is a system prompt for the AI that you're an expert Python and PyTorch engineer. Your job is to is correctness and holding to the given task specification. And then this is a task specification that this should be the code structure with all the configurations and definition. We are giving the job. We are also giving it some of the libraries which it need to improve and then model definition and then a lot of other instructions. So you see it's a power packed prompt with as much detail as um, necessary. And that is one of the, I would say, 
a good prompting technique which you can leverage where you not only give it very very extensive detailed prompt but also various examples so that the response of the model would be grounded and that is where it gives you a written kernel for CUDA now if you want to test out what this kernel looks like they have shared this um, interactive website where you can play around with this stuff now if you go to this interactive website <clears throat> you can inspect more than 17,000 verified kernels and their profiles including torch ncu and clang tidy data so for example if i just click on this first one this is a kernel name you see on the left hand side there is a lot of metadata around cuda and other information if i keep scrolling down it also gives you related kernels and then you can tech, uh, check the PyTorch functional API sort of stuff and then I'm not going to go into the all the machine learning mumbo jumbo we are not going to create a kernel here and then this is a PyTorch module which it has generated on the right hand side you can either check its CUDA implementation a lot of uh, scary looking code there and then there's a torch profile which you can check around various matrices around CPU memory and then launch kernel fused ops and then lot of other stuff is there there is also ncu profile with lot of performance matrices around pipes and warps and then we have some of the other information that is sort of a log which you can check out as what happened there and as i said if i go back to the leaderboard there are <clears throat> 17000 kernel which you can check you can also check it out from all kernels you can sort it with different levels and then you can sort by speed up compile and all that levels and tasks and there are various experiments which they have run on it there is a lot of other information which is scattered throughout their uh, website which i will drop the link in video's description but all in all looks quite interesting as you already saw that um, it is working in four stages where it is taking the pytorch code as input and translating into CUDA kernel and then using the optimization and evolution to further optimize and improve the performance of the future kernels so what could be the benefit of it look i think there could be three benefits first and foremost uh, this is automating the process of optimizing CUDA kernel and that is mostly a very very low level and sort of a mystery uh, thing so i think that if you're looking to build your own kernel and if you want to optimize it this could be a good tool if we get access to it of course and then it also generates highly optimized CUDA kernels as you can already see very quickly which is quite uh, an impressive thing it also accelerates the development of high performance AI application and then looks like a good tool but the problem is that can I install it locally can I use it uh, the data set is there which is quite good and the licensing is not apache 2 so this is another i believe thing which they could improve maybe uh, i think this is ccnc license which is a, a bit of a cryptic license and i will uh, let you explore it anyway i will drop the link to it in video's description let me know what do you think about it and more importantly i don't know what nvidia would think about it anyway before i let you go let me also introduce you to the sponsors of the video who are our very good friends at iGenPod. iGenPod lets you effortlessly deploy a personalized knowledge pod across platforms like discord slack and others it is ideal for open source tech communities and startups that provide user support and i will drop the link to their website in video's description if you like the content please consider subscribing to the channel if you're already subscribed please share it among your network as it helps a lot thank you for watching